Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and there is literally too much information to me, for me to go over today. I'm, I, I, I was, I was thinking I was just gonna, you know, look around for a while today and find some information. And I just got overloaded so fast that I need, just said, okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and put together, uh, my video to, um, the, today's video, my second video actually. Look at this. We are about to cross 600 billion for the first time. Since 2017, Bitcoin has hit its all-time high today. That is big. In fact, I need to write that down because Bitcoin ATH is today. You know XRP's turn's coming, don't you? We'll talk about that later. Um, XRP right now is up over 8, 8.5% 8 right now. It's gotten as high as, I think, 52 cents. Now, there's a guy, this guy was on Yahoo Finance today. His name is Travis Kling, I think. Travis Kling, and he is with um, IKJ Asset Management. He's the founder and chief investment officer. And what you need to understand is when when Bitcoin is doing this thing, it never fails. Bitcoin, Bitcoin goes crazy. And all of this money, not all of it, but a good bit of it, eventually finds its way into the, what, the digital assets that are going to be actually used because Bitcoin's just going to be a store of value. Um, it just happens that way. But so it's important that you get excited about what's happening with Bitcoin. And this guy lays out really well. And I'm going to play a good portion of this. He lays out really well everything that is happening. The institutions are coming in and don't think that the retailers aren't going to pile in on top of them. Listen to this. Yeah, that's right. Th thanks, Zach, for having me back on. Um, so the last time we were here was three years ago. Uh, real different backdrop in terms of what it looks like currently relative to three years ago. The move in 2017 was primarily retail driven. And this time around, it's been primarily institutional driven. And it was really kicked off by Paul Tudor Jones announcing his Bitcoin position in May of this year. And then over the last call it, 90 days as Bitcoin's price has essentially doubled, the the dominant features there have been uh, Grayscale Bitcoin Investment Trust buying and Michael Saylor at MicroStrategy buying. So, so just to unpack those two things for a minute. So Grayscale's Bitcoin Investment Trust, the holdings of Bitcoin that they have have absolutely exploded. Since September 21st of, of this year, Grayscale has added 133,000 Bitcoin to their holdings. Uh, and that's Bitcoin that's never coming back out into the market to be sold again. It's in the trust essentially forever. And that 133,000 Bitcoin over an 85 day period of time is 1.7 times all the new Bitcoin that have been created by miners over that period of time. So you're truly sucking out, mm -hmm. you know, an incredible amount of supply in the market. Mm -hmm. And then and then when Those you look at Michael Saylor over at, at MicroStrategy, so between himself and, and company, uh, they've purchased nearly 59,000 Bitcoin since late July. And that was yeah. before they announced the $400 million convert that was announced last week. It was upsized to 550 million and then closed mm -hmm. at 650 million. And, uh, you know, it's unclear whether or not he has bought, you know, taken that $650 million and, and spent some, all, or none of it on Bitcoin at this exact moment. Uh, but, uh, uh -huh. you know, a direct quote from Sailor is that he's planning on owning this quote for 100 years. So, so, yeah, so Travis, when, when you th when you talk about the larger institutional players in this space, I mean, that would seem to suggest that uh, there's not going to be as much volatility around Bitcoin that we have seen in years past. I mean, where do you think it levels off at? Is 20,000 the level that it stays at? Or you think there's still significant upside? Well, 
You know, look, I run an investment fund for a living, so this is certainly not investment advice, but I would be shocked if it stays, you know, anywhere even close to 20,000, to be honest with you. Um, you know, Stanley Druckenmiller and Paul Tudor Jones, a couple of the most successful macro investors of all time, most well-respected investors of all time, like it's not, it's not a meme that when they buy, other institutional investors buy. That's not like a turn of phrase, like that, that's actually happening. And you're seeing a waterfall of these type, types of announcements happen. I mean, just last week you had Mass Mutual, uh, a insurance company that's older than the light bulb, uh, buy $100 million worth of Bitcoin and also take a minority stake in a, a Bitcoin company, NYDIG. Uh, and then just today or and yesterday, it was announced that uh, Ruffer Asset Management, a 20-something billion dollar hedge fund out of, uh, out of Europe, they bought $740 million worth of Bitcoin. Uh, and then there's another announcement, One River today, that has uh, announced that they've purchased up to $600 million and have commitments up to a billion dollars to buy through early 2021. So you really are yeah. seeing this sort of cascading waterfall of institutional interest. Yeah, that's not. Okay, I just wanted to play you that part so you can see. And remember, as you hear all of these things, there's only 21 million Bitcoin. There's only 100 billion XRP ever. There's only 50 billion Stellar XLM. Remember those numbers because as they come, you and I have been sitting here all along. We've been waiting for them to come. It took a little longer than many of us thought it would, but now they're coming. And he says it's institutional now. It's not just going to be institutional. The re Pretty soon, you're going to start seeing the institutions and the financial advisors start telling their retail clients how great this is. And that's when you're going to also see this stuff go crazy. Okay, or in conjunction with it, crypto dim, but there's a lot coming, folks. Raul Paul says this, I'm about to present the world's best trade, a.k.a. Bitcoin. I disagree with that. To 150 European hedge funds and asset managers wish me luck. Hashtag wall of money. That sounds like I need to write that down. That could be in the title too. Hashtag wall of money. I like that. Okay. Moving along because we've got some good, good tweets I ran across today. Like it, LOL. Future headline, deep liquidity solidifies XRP position as the top of the crypto market. Future disingenuous quote. We knew XRP would eventually lead to the crypto markets because we uh, lead the crypto markets because we understood its tech and utility and anticipated this move since 2014. Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase. I could totally see Jamie Dimon saying that. XRP Bart sent me this. Another Bitcoin Max. Uh, I'll call these the Bitcoin Maxi tweets section because here comes two or three of them. First, Michael Saylor. Bitcoin is the world's best treasury reserve asset in the emerging dominant monetary network. Wrong. XRP. It is the solution to the, to the store of value problem faced by every individual corporation and government on earth. And then Mike Novogratz says, I want to add some fuel to the fire. So excited to partner with Canada's largest fund group. He's partnering, partnering with CI Financial. And then we've got Barry Silbert. All eyes now on one trillion dollars total market, or or is he, he may be talking about one trillion for Bitcoin? Who knows? Um, Joker, Joker did some good ones too today. Unconfirmed news of Mark Zuckerberg buying three billion dollars worth of Bitcoin today, and that was yesterday that he put that out. So who knows? He says this Bitcoin today. This is from today. Bitcoin above twenty k means XRP fourteen dollars incoming. Days to buy XRP below $1 are now really, really limited. I still believe Flare Networks tokens will be traded around $7 in Q1 2021. Now that is some bold predicting right there, but I like it. Okay, and then we had this from Blockchain Backer, who is also, um, now he's got a YouTube channel. You can go watch him as well. Blockchain Backer, really good. You know, he's a really smart guy. With our recent price action in X on the XRP chart, the macro view of crypto, including Bitcoin's breakout into all-time high, I don't believe $2 is, the X is XRP's next resistance level. I think we're going to go much higher. 
these guys have been in, pretty well in sync with each other for a good p part of the time here. All right. Okay, moving along. Riz XRP sent me this. Now, this you're going to like. This is from Stephen Boldia. This is a guy named Tim Grant, head of business at Six Digital Exchange. He says he was inspired by Ripple and Coinbase. And then I'm going to show you a little more on this guy's history after you see this. Watch what he says. And there I was in the West Coast, and I met with Coinbase and Ripple on the same day, on that fateful day in 2015. And and all over the course of those two meetings of listening to Chris Larson at Ripple and to Brian at Coinbase and hearing their story, their passion, but the reimagining of the rails, the reimagining of the infrastructure captured yeah. my captured my attention. And at that point, I never looked back. You know, I went, I went, uh, I bought, I actually bought some Bitcoin <laughs> that day just to just to have a Coinbase account and know what it meant. Right. Um, unfortunately, I sold it quite a long time ago. <laughs> So, uh, so that was uh, that was never really a, a, an impact for me, but um, but ultimately it forced me to go back to UBS and immediately say, wait a minute, there's something else going on here, um, and that's how I got started. That's 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 why that led me to R three. R three led me to Drum G. Drum G led me to to SDX. So that's my that's my origin story. We need that cross-border step and the work that we're doing with the Bant de France, um, I think could end up being a good example of that. The work that then, and I would anticipate in 2021 that you will see some other connectivity cross-border that with Switzerland and other locations. Um, and, and, and that will all accrue. Now, again, let's, it's the journey. What, could we look back in three years and see some central bank digital currency being issued? I'd like to think so. Um, five years, I certainly hope so. Um, ten years, I hope it's starting to become somewhat prolific. But, right. but, but we've got to make these steps, and uh, and now we've got the rails to do this this payment leg. Okay, so he says he met with back in 2015 with Chris Larson at Ripple and the CEO of, of uh, Coinbase, Brian Armstrong, and that's what inspired him. Well, so that was 2015. And we know from, we know from talking to people like Greg Kidd that the first thing that Greg Kidd and them did when, when Greg Kidd got there was they went straight to the treasury. So this guy who doesn't even join the party until 2015, Ripple was started around 2012. This guy doesn't even show up till 2015. And look what he did after that. This guy went and, and met with the Obama administration, Obama advisors at the DC blockchain event. Um, advisors did President Barack Obama hosted distributed ledger bank consortium R3 Sev. That's what it was called back then. And three other Bitcoin and blockchain industry representatives at the National Academy of Sciences in Washington, DC earlier this month. My question to you is this. If this guy who learned from Chris Larson in 2015 was presenting to the Obama administration, which you'll see him doing right here. Small blockchain companies, we have great relationships with, with all of the, the incumbent startups. Uh, but perhaps most notable, as was mentioned before, regulators and central banks, we fundamentally... So this guy is, is presenting to the Obama administration in May 20 of 2016. And we know that Ripple had already been meeting with the government. So the question is, what was Ripple doing with the government? If this guy was presenting to them publicly in, two th in May of 2016, and he didn't even learn about this stuff till 2015. That's why, I, that's why I'm here, folks. I am here because I realized early on that, there, that as Naveen Gupta says, Ripple is no ordinary company. They are here to either put in a dent in the universe or go away, and they haven't gone away. It's just the beginning of the beginning, and they are going to put a dent in the universe if you don't think they have already. Well, this guy, Tim Grant, who was R3 CEO, he was also on stage back in 2017 presenting this, the fourth industrial revolution and showing how this was all gonna come about. 
Brad Garlinghouse tweeted, uh, he tweeted a congratulations to the new board member, Sandy, with her years of expertise in regulatory affairs, treasury, and financial services. She'll be invaluable to help in helping guide Ripple through our next phase of growth. Um, and then we have this from Coindesk. New CBOE is joining the race to take cryptocurrency pricing mainstream with planned index launch in Q2 2021. Everybody, it, the dominoes are falling, folks. Now, um, this is a, a tweet. Remember, Bob Way was one of the first 10 people at Ripple, too. Bob Way says, nice, fine. That is exactly why the term has become so popular. Once you have atomic settlement via two central banks, the game is over. Every other central bank will follow. Otherwise, their country would be at a significant disadvantage. And he's retweeting this tweet from Michelle XRP Vet. Um, 0.001%. Um, ooh, she's in the 0.001%. Good for her. Um, to offer banks a tool set for implementing, implementing CBDCs. US based Ripple has announced it is planning on offering central banks a tool set that will enable them to implement various forms of central bank digital currencies. Um, so that's good stuff. Let me make sure I'm not. Okay. That's good stuff. Michael at VL Five Links sent me this. I'll finish here uh, from Anderzell. Interesting Kraken showing up in ODL. Kraken has received a bank charter as the first exchange in the U.S. And Ripple is an investor in Kraken as well. And for those of you that don't know, Jesse Powell, who is the CEO of Kraken, the Kraken Exchange. Jesse Powell was one of the first people that worked at Ripple and he left early on. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family, family that it's getting real exciting around here, and there's so much information. I don't want to go back to doing three videos a day, but I could. Thank you for listening. Every day, billions of people around the world are mocked, ridiculed, laughed at, and embarrassed by their friends, family, and even strangers. These people go through their days knowing there are secrets being kept from them. They hear the faint whispers behind closed doors. The information and knowledge is held very close and only shared with others who were fortunate enough to find out. Feeling lost, rejected and ostracized, these people give up, never finding out what digital assets the digital asset investor holds. But there is hope. Join the free Digital Asset Investor email newsletter and find out what digital assets he owns each month, including investments he's considering. Click the link in the description of this video or go to digitalassetinvestornewsletter.com. Put an end to your days of gloom and depression. Join the greatest free digital asset email newsletter ever created.